Today, we're gonna to go over the top 10 tools that I think are essential for all designers and web developers slash online entrepreneurs. Let's get into it. Now, the first site that is gonna be obviously the most critical one is a very basic one, but Figma as an app is critical for my entire workflow, not just running a web design agency, but also the YouTube channel. If you see, we've got two tabs over here. We've got new Maku site and thumbnails. So this is the file that we used to redesign or well, to design in the first place our site. I've designed every single thing that I do with Figma first. Figma is my go-to for everything for my YouTube channel as well as my brother's. If you guys don't know his channel, he also has one. You might have seen him around, but Figma is going to be the most essential tool. Now, this is a design tool. It is not a web development tool. We'll go over some of those in a little bit, but this tool is so good for designing. It is literally the only thing that you need, and if you can tell, we use it a lot in my agency. It's something that is secondhand to a lot of design teams. It's the most important tool that so many people use. But my workflow isn't just design. We also have development, a lot of planning, productivity, things like that. So we're going to cover everything in this video. Next up is going to be Framer. Now, recently I did some lecturing at a university and the tool that I used to help non-designers create their own websites and start that whole process from zero was Framer. Why? Because it is the most simple tool to use if you have no idea how to create a website. It has a lot of capabilities that can allow you to grow and shape any website you want without being too advanced, but it also has those capabilities to go above and beyond. Now, I just did a video on five effects that can take your framer site into something pretty basic to something pretty fantastic in under 10 minutes. So go ahead and check that one out up there. But anyways, Framer is one of the tools that I use in my lecturing at universities to make sure that students have a tool that is robust, but also easy to manage for those that are just getting started in this world. Now, Framer isn't just for design. There's a bunch of animation stuff, obviously, but it's also really good for SEO, for localization. There's CMS. There's all the features and tools that you would expect from a big product like this. But anyways, another website builder that I use, and if you guys have been following my channel for a while now, is going to be Webflow. Now, Webflow is something that I use all the time to build my sites. If you guys know my agency, it's what we run my entire agency on, maku.studio. See here. It's what we have branded ourselves as a Webflow agency. Not only that, it's also where I have my design academy. So Webflow is kind of like the tool that you can use to build literally anything you want with the most advanced CSS, HTML, custom CSS and HTML stuff as well, as well as you can add a lot of JavaScript and you can just basically go as crazy as you want. And so this is the tool that I chose to make sure that we have basically endless amount of opportunity in order to create the sites that we need. So this does come with a pretty steep learning curve, something that Framer has less of a learning curve if you're coming from Figma, but it's something that is gonna be essential regardless if you're gonna be building, whether it's Framer or Webflow, you need a website builder that as a designer can help you pretty much create anything you want. And these two tools, help you get at least 90% of the way there without any custom JavaScript. You can add GSAP and a lot of custom JavaScript to go above and beyond, but the tool in itself, the vanilla version is already pretty insane. Okay, then we have Notion. Now, it's a bit of a running joke with people that work with me that say that I'm obsessed with Notion and I use it too much, but I've also, created a bunch of PDFs for you guys for free that you can download. And I'm going to leave the lemon squeezy site. You can download all this stuff in the description, but notion is one of the tools that I use all the time and have done even before having the agency or any SAS where it's basically where I write everything I need, where I do all my productivity stuff. And now also a tool that I use every day is called Notion Calendar. And you'll see down here, my Mac stack, we've got Notion Calendar. Now I'm a little bit scared of opening this up, so I might just show you the site itself. But anyways, here, I mean, okay, we can see, we can see what we've got here. This is basically Notion Calendar. And what I love about Notion Calendar is that it connects directly with Notion itself. So what I have is everything inside of Notion Calendar. I have my agency stuff. I have my workout plans, my YouTube tracker. I'm doing a half Ironman. In April. So I'm tracking that as well. So everything is inside of here, the trips that we're taking, just everything, everything, everything. And so actually in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing videos from Portugal. So that is what this is all about. But ignore that notion, both the calendar and notion itself is one of the best, best, best tools 
that I love to use. Now here, there's a bunch of files that I've created for you guys for free, branding guidelines, I don't know, just a bunch of stuff. But anyways, Notion, of course, there's so many videos about it and I'm gonna actually link a video that I did on the best Notion pack, I believe, which is up here as well. But please, please, please use Notion. It's free, I've never paid for it. It's fantastic, one of the best productivity tools that you will ever find. One of the only limitations I would say is that it's not necessarily a traditional Word document setup. It's more of like a blocked out setup, but that's totally fine. Next up is gonna be, surprise, surprise, ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT is absolutely phenomenal, and I don't wanna just only use ChatGPT because that kind of ruins a lot of the human spirit, but it is absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm sure I don't need to show you guys how to use this, but if you just type in your messages, so for example, give me a fake brief for a web design client 10K. You don't even need to spell it correctly, but it's just gonna spit out a very realistic, AI generated fake brief. Now I use ChatGPT for either inspiration, for help with case studies, for my agency or just cleaning up emails. I don't know, simple stuff like that. But also, I don't know if I need to do the, um, the description for my YouTube video and it's not really something I, I feel like doing, I'll just plug in the transcript and it'll give me a really good description that I could never as well as. So it's something that's helped a lot take all of that kind of like mundane work out of the mix and I get to actually enjoy doing the videos and other stuff. And so obviously ChatGPT is something that is insane. Now, another tool that is not as well known or as well like publicized, but Claude is absolutely phenomenal for development. Now I'm currently coding my own app without knowing too much code. I did a a JavaScript course, but I'm obviously not an expert. So I'm using ChatGPT and Claude, and Claude is fantastic when it comes to generating AI written code. Now to give you guys a little sneak peek of what this app that I'm building is, it's kind of like a bonsai replacement tool where you can generate contracts that acts as a Notion template with these blocks. So it's gonna be pretty fantastic. It's gonna give you an audit. It's gonna allow you to send it, to sign it, to get paid through it without as much hassle. So that's all coming next year. I just wanna give you a quick sneak peek, but Claude and ChatGPT are gonna be phenomenal to do these either code generations, whether you're in Webflow and you wanna add a little snippet of code and you don't know how to do it, you can just ask it. It's, I don't need to tell you guys how to use ChatGPT. It's all over the world now. So yeah, phenomenal. All right, next up is gonna be Arc. Now, Arc is a Chromium-based browser. What that means is that it runs on the Chrome world. I am not 100% sure, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know. But basically, we have these tabs that allow us to separate our content between these different worlds. As we would have in Chrome, where we have different profiles, we can also do the same thing, but it's much easier to get to where we need to go. So for example, this is my agency world, right? We have the actual landing page for our site. Here I have my cow, my email, the Webflow profile, search console, analytics, uh, ChatGPT chat, Claude, some mockups, convert kit, the funnel, and then some the custom code stuff that I'm building here. For example, YouTube, I've got payment information, different deals that I'm doing with different people, stats on my own channel. I've got the YouTube studio itself up there. So I can separate all these different worlds, but just jump through them really quickly using my mouse here. And you can see that number one, it helps me separate work from personal stuff. So it's not all in one place. So I can kind of clock out mentally whenever I need to, and I can relax when I need to, and I can work when I need to. But here I have my, all my training stuff for my fitness goals, for my ultra marathon training. Then I'm going to start doing my half Ironman, all this stuff. I can like separate it. You know, it doesn't need to be all like agency, fitness, all that in one. I can separate it. It's way nicer. Another really cool thing is that you can ask ChatGPT stuff directly from the browser. So you don't need to open up your own tab of ChatGPT and do, do your whole thing. You can just directly start from the browser. It's something that I was a bit hesitant to get started with a couple years ago when it first started getting popular. But now that I've changed, I'm very happy with it. It's much, I don't know, it just, it just feels a lot smoother. It feels like it's meant for designers and developers rather than Chrome, which is like for everybody, you know? But anyway, I started using it on the 12th of April, so almost a year now and I'm honestly very, very happy. There's my email if you guys wanna send me any websites for me to review. Please don't, maybe do, but yeah. These are some of the, I think I covered eight. I got rid of two different apps because I'm not sure that they're the best thing to talk about. But if you guys want me to talk about those two apps and how I actually run the agency day to day, let me know because those are some videos that I've been thinking about doing. Specifically, I want to go through more of the course because not a lot of people know that I have this course, but I just want to go through module by module what would be included 
and how we run the agency day to day. But anyways, that is for another video. If you guys enjoy that, let me know and we can get started on that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'm going to leave the links to everything that I talked about in the description as always. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.